on in-person versus remote classes as COVID numbers rise in our area. Plus, see how a new type of technology is helping state college bars manage crowds during the pandemic. We're essentially creating like a formula and algorithm for each bar on their capacity and turnover. So the first couple of days is definitely a little bit of give and take. And a fall without football in Happy Valley? Hear what fans are saying about the unusually quiet Saturdays. The Center County Report starts now. Good afternoon. I'm Jason Shulman. Thanks for joining us for the Center County Report. And I'm Callaway Turner. Our top story. Governor Tom Wolf announced today that restaurants will be able to increase indoor occupancy to 50% starting September 21st. And the new COVID-19 case numbers are just in for Center County. We added 12 new cases to bring the total to 686 to date. The county's COVID death total remains at 11. The State Department of Health says its calculation shows 81% of coronavirus patients across Pennsylvania have recovered from the virus. Last week, Penn State reported 174 new cases at University Park. State College Area School District has moved to remote learning for this week as it looks at more data and decides whether to stay online or go back to in-person classes. Reporter Addison Albert has more on the story. It's already been a wild ride for students, parents, teachers, and school staff as the State College School District waits to learn the fate of its school year. After only a few days of in-person classes, the school district canceled classes Friday and then switched to remote learning this week as it looks into more COVID-19 case data in Center County. According to the Pennsylvania Department of Health, Center County reached a substantial level of COVID-19 cases and schools are recommended to go fully remote. Parent Michael Blake says deciding whether or not to send his child to school was a difficult personal choice. So kind of the decision is a bit out of our hands. Um, but if we felt that the district was rushing back to in-person before we felt it was a good idea, we would, again, have that um, decision at that point. An email from the district provided parents, faculty, and staff with a COVID-19 dashboard, which shows the rising COVID-19 numbers in the area. It'll be updated regularly. In the meantime, students like Riley Blake are learning how to live through a pandemic. I mean, I feel pretty good about wearing my mask. I always try my hardest to keep a distance from people, and I, I personally feel pretty good. The school district will be coming out with an updated decision this Friday, September 11th, to see if they'll let students back into the schools for the week of September 14th through the 18th. For now, the district says it'll make decisions on a week-to-week -week basis. The next key announcement is expected this Friday. In State College, I'm Addison Albert for the Center County Report. The district says because of the move to remote learning this week, it's making meals available to families for pickup tomorrow from 10 to 1 at the high school. But they ask that you order online in advance. Contact the district for more details. Big changes are in place for this fall in downtown State College because of the coronavirus. Reporter Gina Cadigan shows you how a phone app is changing the way college students go to the bars. Yeah, we were devastated by COVID. Um, we still are. After months of lockdowns and limitations, many downtown businesses in State College are still in a tough spot. You know, the hospitality industry doesn't work on large margins, so... You know, it's, it's really hurt us. Students are now back in town, so businesses are open, but with changes to keep the community safe. Dante Lou Casey is the director of operations at Champs Downtown and says his business is using a new app called Line Leap to help. When COVID hit and line ordinances uh, became a thing, uh, you know, we partnered with them and, and they developed the Spot Saver and um, we've been using that. The app works with 13 local bars and allows users to buy a ticket for a 30 minute time slot to arrive. Usually around this time of the semester, these sidewalks would be packed with students waiting to get into bars and venues. But with this new Line Leap app, all of those lines have been completely eliminated so that these bars can comply with new social distancing rules. 
the borough of State College put in place a temporary COVID-19 ordinance that only allows up to 10 people in line outside of a business. But most bars don't want to take the chance of having too many people gathering, so they've opted into using this app. Founders Max Schaff, Nick Becker, Patrick Skelly, and technology officer Jack Richard teamed up to start Line Leap back in 2017. They recently redeveloped the app once bars and venues reopened with COVID rules. They got the idea to change their app when one of their venue partners in Minneapolis was told he could only reopen his business if his customers had reservations. When the similar sanctions were placed on Penn State bars with no lines and no crowds outside the buildings, we decided to then approach them and give them the same opportunity uh, for us to launch that reservation platform. The app is now used nationwide at more than 20 college campus locations. We're essentially creating like a formula and algorithm for each bar on their capacity and turnover. The algorithm takes into account when most customers show up and leave to reduce the number of tickets available so that the bar can stay under or exactly at the capacity rule. The app has only been offering the reservations for its state college bars for a few days now, and some users have been experiencing issues. Brian Surkoff says he's frustrated with the system. And we weren't allowed to get into the bar unless we went to this app and paid $20 per person. And I said, look, I'm just, we just want to go in and get one drink. The other guy came up and said, no, we're at capacity. Skelly says the algorithm is still a work in progress and they're trying to make improvements. This is the best way through a socially distanced entry system to let everyone come into the bars, still have a good time, but the number one priority is safety. Reporting in State College, I'm Gina Cadigan for the Center County Report. The founders of the app say they're planning to expand to more state college bars soon. Public health departments nationwide have been told to prepare to distribute COVID-19 vaccines as early as November 1st, but some experts are skeptical the vaccines can be ready that quickly. The CDC told health departments about the urgent need to have vaccine distribution sites up and running by November 1st, but many departments say they lack the staff and resources to be ready that quickly and many Americans are skeptical about the safety of vaccines developed that fast. Labor Day weekend is over, but we may not be done with the summer weather. Coming up, see what the seven day forecast looks like for Central PA. And a new casino may soon be on the way to Center County. Find out who just spent $10 million to buy the license and where the casino might open. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. One thing you can never have sex without. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the I. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, I am a witness and so are you. Penn State's University Police are mourning the unexpected loss of an emergency dispatcher. 
For more than 30 years, Matthew Fultz worked with the university police, answering emergency calls and dispatching the appropriate personnel. Fultz also served as an active member and leader of the Logan Fire Company for over 25 years. He survived by his wife and brother. He was 57 years old. Plans are in place for a new casino opening in the State College area. Investor and Penn State alum and board member Ira Lubert won a state auction last week for a new mini casino license. A leading potential site for the casino is the Nittany Mall in College Township. The facility could have as many as 750 slot machines, along with gaming tables. Lubert is paying $10 million for the license. If he doesn't choose a Nittany Mall location, he could choose any other place within a 15-mile radius. sunshine, just a few clouds in the sky right now. Temperatures currently sitting into the upper 70s, getting close to 80 degrees already this afternoon, as a dew point is currently sitting into the low 60s. So a very comfortable start to this Tuesday. But looking at across central Pennsylvania, seeing much of the same as temperatures are sitting into the upper 70s, starting to get close to 80. As you look across the state, some spots have already gotten there. Philadelphia seeing into the low 80s. And same thing with Erie up in northwestern Pennsylvania. Looking at satellite and radar, those high temperatures are not the only good news for today. Look at all of this sunshine. There's not a lot of clouds on the satellite or any precipitation, any of those brighter colors lighting up across the radar. That's indicating that we're seeing clear skies. Zooming out, we see a full view of all that wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, seeing a weather maker to the northwest and also down to the south in the Carolinas, but that is not going to interrupt our beautiful day today. But timing it out for you, let's see how long those sunny skies last. As we head into this evening, seeing mostly clear conditions, and even as we start to head into Wednesday, starting to see a mix of sun and clouds, mostly sun though, rather than clouds. But as we start heading into the overnight hours on Wednesday and into Thursday, we do start to see that cloud cover built in from the southeast and also from the northwest. That's going to start to sandwich us between two different low pressure systems that are going to cause us to have that cloud cover increase here in Center County. But today we are going to be remaining sunny as temperatures make their way into the mid 80s with plenty of sunshine to go around. Tonight, temperatures drop into the low 60s with clear conditions. So maybe you want to go onto Old Main Lawn or Hub Lawn and do some stargazing with all of these clear skies. If you're interested in doing so, look at all of those stars. Tomorrow, temperatures rise back up into the 80s. Another great day. Make sure you enjoy it before we start seeing that cloud cover increase as we head into this weekend. As we see the sunshine sticks around into the middle of the week, but then by the weekend and the end of the week, we start to see the clouds move back in as temperatures also take a decline by the weekend, starting to drop into the mid to low 70s. Tracking our next weather maker Saturday night into Sunday, bringing that chance for showers with it on Sunday. The low pressure system that does move in on Saturday moves out by Monday, including its cold front with it, and that will leave the cloud cover to start diminish as we head through the afternoon of Monday and temperatures remain into the low 70s. Now I'm going to send it back over to Preston for sports. Thanks, Nick. Coming up next in sports, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf has changed his restrictions on fans and high school competitions. We'll tell you the changes after the break. Plus, a weekend without Penn State football leaves many fans and students feeling sad. See how they're reacting to the quietest September Saturday in a long time. Sports is next. adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. I do not love him. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds.
They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. I'm Preston Shoemaker with sports. This should be week two of Penn State's football season, but of course, there is no Big Ten football this fall. Fans are still trying to deal with that, and reporter Sarah Sutnick takes a look at a Penn State campus with no football Saturdays. It was a September Saturday like no other. Beaver Stadium with no fans, parking lots with no tailgaters, and a downtown without thousands of football fans. The Big Ten's decision to put the season on hold because of the coronavirus meant a quiet fall weekend. No opening home game, something that didn't sit well with Penn State senior Stephanie Feaster. Honestly, I have to say it's like one of the most depressing sights I've ever seen since I started my four years at Penn State. You know, Saturdays of the day where you can't even walk down the street. It's completely crowded with people. Everyone's in game day stuff. And I just feel like it's like the most depressing thing I've ever seen. With virtually no one at the stadium, it was easy to hear birds chirping, the wind blowing, and the silence inside the stadium. As you can see behind me, there's a whole lot of nothingness because there's not 110,000 fans in Beaver Stadium today. On a normal Saturday morning or afternoon, this place is packed with students, parents, alumni, families in blue and white decked out, ready to support Penn State football. Students and other football fans say it's tough to keep school spirit up during a tough time like this. It makes me feel sad. The whole reason why I chose Penn State X amount of years ago was because I love the school spirit. I love how anywhere you went, people were literally in Penn State stuff. And now I see literally less than 10% of the students walking around campus in Penn State clothing. It's a sad thing. No football also means another huge financial hit to a college town already hard hit for the past six months from COVID-19 restrictions and event cancellations. Fans hope things improve soon so football can return to Happy Valley. In State College, I'm Sarah Sotnick for the Center County Report. There are some other conferences still playing football this season. Last night, BYU played Navy at Annapolis with the Cougars winning big by a score of 55-3. to The Big Ten continues to face some backlash over its decision last month to postpone the football season. It's estimated that without football and other sports this year, Penn State, like other conference schools, could lose $100 million or more. The Nittany Lions and other teams are practicing. They're allowed up to 12 hours per week but there is still no word on whether a season will be played later this fall or in the spring. In high school sports, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf has relaxed his restrictions on fan attendance. The new guidelines allow spectators to attend games, but they count towards the statewide gathering limits of 25 people indoors and 250 people outdoors. Fans will be required to practice social distancing and wear a mask unless they are outdoors and more than six feet apart. The State College Little Lions are practicing but a final decision on competition won't come till later this month. The NFL is set to kick off its season this week after canceling the preseason and altering training camp due to COVID-19. The reigning Super Bowl champ Kansas City Chiefs will open the season on Thursday night against the Houston Texans. The Philadelphia Eagles begin their season on Sunday at 1 o'clock against the Washington football team, while the Pittsburgh Steelers will kick off on Monday night against the New York Giants at 7.15. That's all for sports. Now back to you at the Anchor Desk. Thanks, Preston. Coming up next, it's been a state college tradition for almost 100 years, but this fall, it'll look far different. We'll explain after the break. Stay with us. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised.
Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. I rescued Toast from a shelter in 2011. I love Toast because she's a lazy diva. Toast does whatever she wants, obviously. She's sleeping right now. She's an epic snuggler. She's so comforting. She's so loving. Toast makes me laugh. <laughs> when I walked into the shelter, I knew right then that she was special. Okay, Simon, what do people wear? Clothes. That's right. So it's important to learn how to dress yourself. Here's how it's done. Shirt, underwear, pants, socks, shoes. Underwear, always first, name tag on the back. Then pants and shirt. Go ahead and put this on. Now with the shirt, you want to make sure the first button's right or you have to start all over again, okay? Socks left on left, right on right. Tying the shoes, we're going to take the laces, we're going to cross them over, we're going to turn around where the bunny goes down in the hole, pull it tight, and bunny ears. Got it? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. It's one of the most popular fall events in State College, the Penn State Homecoming Parade. But this year, it'll look much different. Instead of winding its way through campus and downtown in front of thousands of spectators, this year's parade will move online because of the coronavirus pandemic. The event on October 16th will include a pre-recorded special. The homecoming parade has been a Penn State tradition for almost 100 years. The first one was held in 1922. That's all for today's newscast. You can find more of our stories on our website, centercountyreport.com. Our next newscast is on Friday. And you can follow us anytime for breaking news on Twitter. That's at Center County REP or on our Facebook page. We also have a Center County Report Instagram. Have a good day. Thank you.